Hello and good day, traders. So this video is actually uh, being made uh, due to a request that I got in my comment section. So, um, but I actually believe in the statement as far as uh, this secret to improve your current trading journal. So whatever it is you use, I believe this is a great supplement to uh, that journal. And it's something I've said before, so probably will uh, be no really no secret to you guys but uh, what that secret is I'm talking about is video recording your trades for a lot of reasons sometimes when you are done taking a trade um, you may go to your journal you may log how you were feeling all of that and that's great right but depending on how diligent you are about going back and logging it like immediately or in real time while you're taking the trades is you might not be able to capture exactly exactly how you were feeling not to mention some things could get kind of lost uh, in translation um, even though it's your own words so what I recommend you do is that you start recording your own uh, trade sessions uh, you don't have to put them on online they can just be your own private video journal um, or you can upload them to your own private YouTube channel um, for yourself to watch on any device whenever you want um, and always be able to kind of go back and and restudy. Uh, think about like a, a professional golfer or a boxer, someone that while they're practicing, um, they're being video recorded so that they can see um, how they're doing and maybe areas that they need to make adjustments. Well, as traders, we can take that same approach. We can be videoing ourselves or the charts um, and be documenting our own commentary so when we first come to the charts and we sit down and we uh, do our analysis we could be recording that so we know for sure exactly what we were thinking because we can say it out loud and have that audio recording um, and then uh, obviously while we're taking the trades you can instead of thinking things uh, in your head you can you can verbalize it and have it all being recorded so that you can go back um, and use that recording to help grow and make improvements. So if you're wondering how to do this, well, first of all, you can do it for free using a software called OBS Studio. And that is the point of this video. I'm going to show you how to, um, I'm not going to get into every detail of, of OBS. There's plenty of videos for that that you can find on YouTube, but I'm going to go over some just quick steps that will hopefully uh, jumpstart you into being able to document your own trades uh, using a video recording software. So let's take a look at how you get OBS Studio. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you just want to open up your internet browser and uh, type in OBS Studio. It should be the very first one that pops up. You would just click on this and you would download the one depending on what type of system you're running uh, your trade software on. I'm using Windows, so you would just click through this. I'm not going to do it because I'm sure if you've downloaded whatever trading software you're using to trade on, you know how to download software and install it. So make sure you pick the right one. It'll prompt you to go through the steps on downloading the software. Um, and then after it's downloaded, then we can actually open up the application. Once you've downloaded the application, you should have an icon on your desktop. And you can see here it's OBS Studio, and you would just double click on that to launch it. And usually the very first time you download it um, or, or you open it after you've installed it, it's going to ask you if you want to check for updates. I recommend you do that because most likely there is an update and you might as well make sure you have the most current um, version of any patches that they've done so that you have uh, smooth sailing going forward. All right. Once you've opened up OBS, um, and I've, I've expanded this, by the way, I've moved this up here because if I keep it like this, then you'll have this crazy mirror effect and it can get a little, it can get a little confusing. So I decided I will make this small so that we're mainly focused on menus that will be below here. And these are called docs and you can see them down here. You can see scene sources, audio mixer, scene uh, transition controls. You can even click on chats and stats if you want to see those as well they're not necessary though for doing your own recording but basically when you first install this you're going to have basically nothing here it's going to all be blank and so what you'd want to do is you'd want to start off creating a scene so what you do is you would come down here to the bottom left 
And let me turn me off so I am make sure I am not in the way. Um, you would push this uh, plus sign down here to add a new scene. And we'll just call it test. So once I'm in the test, you can see there's no sources currently selected. And so what you would want to do is you would want to add some sources. So most likely what you're going to do is you're going to want to capture um, your entire display. So you would click select uh, display capture. It'll automatically pop up giving it a name and you click OK. And then for me, I have two monitors. So you can see here I have my primary monitor. And if I click on this down here, I have my secondary monitor here. So I could, I could select either one. So if you're only working with one, you would just have your primary monitor selected. And then once you click OK, it would be showing up right here. If I didn't want to record it for some reason, I could just hit this eyeball and it'll hide it. Um, but of course, you're going to want to keep that open to make sure that you can actually see the entire thing. Um, I believe it should automatically adjust um, based on the size that you put in there. Um, if for some reason it doesn't, you can see as, I, as I'm pulling in, you can see this uh, little number, 193 uh, pixels, as, as things are getting adjusted. And as I move it around, it's this is how you can make things smaller if you wanted to put a couple extra things, other, other sources. But again, the primary use of this, I'm not trying to teach you how to do a a live stream or some full-blown recording. This is meant really just as a tutorial on how you can get this set up to start recording your display um, when you're doing your your trades uh, for the day for your trade log. So, uh, but to make sure you have good resolution, you want to make sure that your settings are correct. So, what you'd want to do is, well, first of all, you need to make sure that you have um, a source. Uh, added for your your microphone so make sure you if you don't have that already um, activated you would you would need to do that um, right and so the way you would make sure that you have your mic here is you'd click on settings and under audio this is where you have your main devices um, and so uh, you would want to put like for audio desktop um, that could just be set to default uh, and this way, if, like if you're playing something that would normally come over your speakers and you wanted to record that, you could pick that up under the desktop audio. Um, and then as far as the mic auxiliary, this is where you would select the mic that you're going to be using. Um, you might just be using a default um, or it might uh, say integrated, depends on your particular system. Um, I'm using uh, my uh, external mic, so that's what that's selected. Um, oops, sorry. And uh, the rest of these you can disable. Um, matter of fact, you might find that you get an echo. Um, if you do have any kind of an echo in your recording, just come through, make sure that the, uh, the other ones are disabled. Um, that could include even the desktop audio. Um, and or if you know you're not using the desktop audio because you're just recording your mic while you're, you know, audibly discussing what you're seeing in your charts and while you're taking the trades, you could just... Uh, mute or unmute the desktop audio here by just clicking the microphone or speaker and you can even uh, lower the volume down all the way just to make sure you're not getting any feedback from that source and then to also make sure that you have audio if for some reason you don't see your mic um, in here what you could do is in the sources as well you could click on the plus sign down here you would click audio input capture click OK and then here is where you could select the device um, I have either, well, I have a couple of different options um, myself. I have my, my built-in uh, microphone. This is my HyperX SoloCast that I use. Um, so you just make sure you have the correct one set up um, and you would just add it there as well. So, and here you can actually see this is like mirroring my exi uh, existing mic um, that I already have in here. So I don't actually need this. I'll, I'll go ahead and remove it. But this is just in case you're not seeing it. This is a way that you can do that. Um, but it's the main thing I want to focus in on right now is show you how to make sure that you get a good resolution because that is actually one of the main problems that one of my community members is having. So you want to come down into your settings. And you're not doing this for the purpose of streaming. You're doing it for the purpose of, of recording. So what you'd want to do um, is you'd want to come into output, make sure that you're on advanced um, come to recording 
And right now I currently have things, um, or you could basically mirror what I already have on here if, um, just by scrolling down. But here's the main thing that um, I have set up for mine as far as the rate control and, and the bit rate. Um, these settings would be something that you could mirror to see how it works because if you're liking the videos that I'm producing, this is the setup I'm using for uh, my recordings. Um, also, this is for like your output. But then if you click on video here, it also has where, because I do a lot of live streaming, I have to change my output resolution so that YouTube can um, accept it. You, don't not, you do not have to do this. Um, matter of fact, if I wasn't going to be live streaming, I would most of the time just have the base canvas and output canvas set to the same um, same values. Uh, the other thing that's important that you should should do is under advanced. If you scroll down here under recording, you see where it says automatically remox to MP4. This is important just because it makes it easy for you to have a MP4 video file that you can then easily upload to uh, YouTube or any other like rumble service, um, video player online service, um, and, or just compress it and make it easier to, to view from, um, from any other device. And so once it does that, it's going to give you two files when you're done recording and I'll show you what that looks like. And, but before I do, I also got to make sure you know where to find your videos. So you go to output and recording. You could see my recording path is set to my C drive under user, my name, and then my videos. So just make sure you know where your videos are going to be going to um, so that you can find them. But like I was saying is once uh, you are finished recording and you hit stop recording, it's going to do a function called remuxing. Um, I'm sure someone that's watching this knows what that means. I don't, but you can see I have all these MKV files and then MP4 files. The MKV file is basically just a, as I understand it, a like a raw uh, version of the file. Um, it can be used for like recovery. Um, and so once you're when you've when you're done and you know the MP4 file is good, you can delete the MK, MKV files. They're just duplicates, um, but it'll just uh, put them in order based on the time and date that it was last recorded. And then this is where you can find them, and you can open up your videos. Um, and you can use those to review your trades and have that as a supplement to your trade journal so that you can um, get the most out of your trade day, uh, trade analysis, and trade results. And then just a couple of final points just for making sure if you have any issues with the quality. Again, come back to your video. Um, you can check the settings here. You can say I have a common frames per second value set to 30. Uh, I'm using the sharpening scaling at 16 samples. Again, the output for the recording, you can see the values that I have here. The encoder settings, um, as far as the uh, high quality single pass um, and the uh, kilobytes per second rate that I'm using. Um, that's, these are all things you can mess around with, but this is a, would be a good place to start. Um, and then you can probably do a lot of other uh, YouTube searches to figure out how you can make additional changes uh, to improve um, your recordings if you feel that uh, something else is needed. So anyway, traders, I hope that this has helped you. And I believe it will because, like I said, a lot of professional sports players, they record themselves. They use that recording for additional analysis to go back and see where they can make improvements. And I think uh, much like a trade journal that can be obviously very useful, that kind of data, um, this is also a really good supplement, especially for identifying areas maybe of your psychology of trading, the emotions. As long as you're willing to kind of talk out loud, you have a microphone so you can record yourself. Um, you can be speaking out loud how you're feeling, what you're seeing, um, and use that to go back and, and use that as a tool to continually sharpen, sharpen and improve your uh, trade psychology. So as always, traders, I hope that this is helpful. I hope it's useful. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, traders, I hope that you take more from the market than it takes from you. May the ticks be forever in your favor. Peace out.